Hello, welcome. In this video, let us look at the scaling property of the Z-transform. The scaling property of the Z-transform. So the property can be stated as follows. That is, if X of N has a Z-transform X of Z with ROC defined by R1 less than mod Z less than R2 that is it's a general ring like structure between the two circles of red eye R1 and R2 then the Z transform of A power N into X of N is given by X of A inverse Z the Z transform of this scaled input that is a power n into x of n is given by x of a inverse z and the corresponding roc is given by mod a multiplied by r1 less than mod z less than mod a multiplied by r2 so that is the new roc here value a is basically a constant it can be a real number or a complex number now let us look at the proof for this property so for this theorem, uh, the Z transform of A power N X of N is given by the summation based on the definition summation N equal to minus infinity to plus infinity A power N X of N Z power minus N. By simply grouping A and Z we get summation N is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity X of N multiplied by A inverse Z whole power minus n. Now, by looking at this uh, summation, we can clearly compare it to the definition of the Z transform, where Z is replaced by A inverse Z. So, this must be X of A inverse Z. Therefore, the Z transform of A power n X of n is X of A inverse Z. Now, to look at, now we look at the ROC, that is, we have R1 less than modulus of A inverse Z less than R2. This should be the new ROC. So in terms of Z, it should be mod A multiplied by R1 less than mod Z less than mod A multiplied by R2. So that is the new ROC. So let us study the impact of this value of A on the new ROC. So for this purpose, let us write A as R0 e power j omega naught and Z as R e power j omega. So by using this new definitions, uh, the ROC becomes uh, R0 R1 less than R less than R0 R2. So this is the new ROC. Uh, uh, now let us study the impact of the value of R0. So if R0 is greater than 1 and the signal X of n is causal, in that case what happens is usually R is greater than R0 R1. So that is the ROC of the causal. Uh, signal. So, in that case, when R0 is greater than 1, the, value, the radius of the circle has increased and the ROC has shrinked. That means, the radius of the new circle is R0 R1 compared to the previous circle or the radius of the previous circle, R0 R1 is greater than, sorry, yeah, R0 R1 is greater than R1 since R0 is greater than 1. So, the ROC has shrinked. And for R0 less than 1, the circle will shrink. That means the value R0 R1 will be less than R1. So the overall ROC will expand. That is ROC has expanded. Now for the anti-causal signals, when R0 is greater than 1 and X of N is anti-causal, In that case, what happens is the actual ROC is just a region inside the circle of radius R2. Therefore, R is less than R2 is the actual ROC. And for this new signal that is A power N into X of N, the new ROC this is the world or the ROC of X of N. ROC of X of N. So, the ROC for uh, A power N into X of N or ROC for the new X of A inverse of Z will be Yes, again a region of circle, uh, region bounded by a circle of radius R0 into R2. That means 
the radius of the circle has increased so roc also has expanded that means for r not greater than 1 for an anti causal signal roc is expanded and similarly for the case where r not is less than 1 and x of n is anti causal we can easily show that it will be uh, we can easily show that the roc shrinks that is the radius actually decreases so r not multiplied by r2 and the uh, roc is the region inside this circle so the region actually shrinks so roc has shrink so to summarize so to summarize we have looked at the scaling property of the z transform that is given a signal x of n with the corresponding z transform x of z z transform of a power n into x of n will be given by x of a inverse z and the corresponding roc is mod a multiplied by r1 less than mod z less than mod a multiplied by r2 that means the roc is also either shrink or expanded based on the based on the amplitude or magnitude of the value a so on the proof is very simple uh, based on the definition of the z transform we just group a and z into a single uh, base and then we have a inverse z whole power minus n and then it will be a x of a inverse z that means it will be a z transform with a variable a inverse z and the new roc is given by a mod a multiplied by r1 less than r or mod z less than mod a multiplied by r2 that is the new roc so based on the value of r not and uh, nature of the signal for example if x of n is causal and r not is greater than 1 then the roc shrinks and r not is less than 1 and roc expands and similarly for anti causal signals when r not is greater than 1 that is when r not is greater than 1 for anti causal signal the roc expands and for for uh, r not less than 1 and anti causal signal r not into r2 is less than r2 so roc gets shrink Thanks for watching.